Uh, hi. Hello. So, uh, this is my English teacher and uh, his wife. So, uh, so today I will have an interview with them. So, firstly, can you uh, shortly introduce yourself at the first? Sure. My name is Timothy. I'm American. I've been living in Peru uh, for about five, six years and uh, teaching English, and I really enjoy it here. I'm going to give the microphone to my wife. Hi, I'm Dharma Belvan. I'm Peruvian Italian. I'm an English teacher and a permaculture designer. Okay, thank you. So first question is about the traveling. So do you have any recommendation while traveling in Peru? Uh, well, for me, my favorite part is the archaeological sites of the Inca. Mm -hmm. And uh, to if just being in Cusco, you have access to maybe a dozen of them. And uh, you don't have to leave the city very far. The Sacsayhuaman is incredibly impressive. Uh, and uh, but there's also a lot of other places too. You could spend weeks weeks doing hiking and uh, seeing the archaeological sites. And otherwise, I think it's it's pretty easy to travel in Peru. Uh, I mean, I, I speak Spanish, so that makes it easier for me. But I'm uh, it's like a comfortable thing with lots of interesting destinations. What's your opinion? Yes, so you talked about the uh, rural areas of Peru and the most amazing places uh, in the world like Machu Picchu or Chuquiquirao. So I would like to share some info about Lima. Um, what I recommend to visit is the Malecon. Is, uh, it has amazing views during the summer. And uh, Barranco is a bohemian neighborhood where you can have some drinks, the best coffee, uh, art expositions, and also amazing food. Um, and um, uh, when it comes to Lima, what, what I recommend is just uh, going to art expositions. There are some amazing uh, uh, Peruvian artists um, and uh, not, too much, not too much exposure. So it will be very, very nice if you will go to uh, Meli. It's a museum in Barranco. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so I think uh, Cusco and Machu Picchu is a must-go place in Peru, right? Mm -hmm. So, what preparation need peop uh, do people need to do before this trip? Um, I mean, before go to uh, Cusco and Machu Picchu. For example, what is the best season? Uh, do they need to prepare some medicine or mm -hmm. some other preparation for that? All right, yeah, those are good, important questions. So, uh, I would definitely avoid uh -huh. uh, January to April. January, February, March, April is the peak of the rainy season, and there's a chance it will rain every day if you're going to visit during that time. Uh, it's not, yeah, I mean, it's risky for that. And then May is maybe the perfect season because in May, it's not too cold. It hasn't become the winter yet. It doesn't rain much anymore, but everything's still very green and vibrant from the rainy season. So if, if you don't have any other um considerations then may would be probably ideal in june july august it gets very cold so make sure you're bringing a winter jacket uh, and uh, the other thing to consider would be the altitude it takes some time to adjust so if you're arriving in cusco and the next day you want to do a bunch of hikes it might be really difficult to do do you have anything to add um, yes, about the, the most authentic experiences you can get in Peru are the ones you can get with native communities in the highlands. Um, I would like to recommend a community called Miss Minai. It's an hour away from Maras, and they still have this ancient knowledge about agriculture and constellations and biodynamic agriculture. So it's, it's really amazing uh, to know the, the culture in, in a deep way. Um, and if you would like to volunteer, I can recommend two projects that I know of. One of them is from a friend of mine. It's called uh, Campesina Forestal. And uh, they do reforest, uh, re reforestation projects. Um, and the other one is Por Eso Peru. It's a, a, a Dutch uh, NGO that helps children. And um, if, if you're also interested in, in uh, you know, getting in touch with this amazing culture, I recommend volunteering as well. Okay, thank you. That's a very good uh, recommendation. Uh, so, uh, next, 
next question is about uh, English. So mm -hmm. considering uh, both of you are English teacher, so I want to know how many people in the in Peru are non English. Do they want to go to abroad to study? And uh, do they have many pressure uh, on study? Uh, the reason why I ask is because you know in my home country, many people, especially this, uh, many students, they have uh, they under a lot of pressure to to pass the ex examination and uh, to get a go to a good university and get a good job. So what is the situation in in Peru? So can you briefly uh, introduce about it? Yeah, you, you take this one first. <laughs> yes, um, so in South American countries, there, there isn't uh, much investment in education. So the only, way, the, the only way you can have a good education in English is if you go to a private school. Because uh, public, public schools, they do not offer a good uh, English course curriculum, unfortunately. So there's lots of uh, demand for English lessons in Peru. And um, there's, I, I've had many students that have traveled abroad and study um, um, in, in, in Europe or, or in the US. And uh, what they struggle the most with is with the pronunciation um, and the fluency. So the educational level when it comes to English lessons in Peru, it's, it's not really, really good <laughs> at the moment. Yeah, something I noticed is the, they'll focus a lot on the grammar, but the speaking production of English is very lacking. As an English teacher, I have given a lot of classes for the TOEFL and the IELTS exam, which indicates there's a lot of demand for people trying to go to, uh, you know, American or Canadian English universities. Uh, yeah, I don't have a further, further insight. Okay, yeah. thank you. Thank you. That's a very good, very yeah. good suggestion. And uh, so, yeah. Another question is about uh, dating. <laughs> what is the dating culture in Peru? So, you know, in my home country, so if people want to get married, usually the men need to prepare a house or a car. <laughs> uh, uh, and uh, also, you know, for the people who work for the government, they have more advantages in the dating market. So, uh, because, you know, that means stable, you know and uh, a good retirement uh, uh, relevance, uh, uh, retirement money. You know. So how about in Peru? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> did in culture in Peru. I'm not. I'm not too experienced into like. Uh, well, when it comes to getting married, what I've seen in my family is that. Um, I was never asked about when am I going to have children or when am I going to get married, because you can see in Peru that there are more and more. Um, female-owned businesses and um, lots of uh, female power, um, lots of uh, female talent when it comes to uh, high executive job positions in Peru. Um, unfortunately, only 9.1% of female uh, uh, of job uh, executive job positions belong to fem to, to the fem to female Peruvians, so it's it's not so it's not going so well. Um, so in, w when it comes to my family, um, it just takes uh, for the women and the men to have a job and get married. But uh, you can also see lots of financial independent uh, dependency from from. Uh, coming from a woman to a man, and that's totally normal to be a housewife. I consider being a housewife is also a job, and um, yes. um, and that a housewife should, should get paid. So <laughs> <laughs> basically, uh, that's all I know about the dating culture in, in Peru. Um, and uh, I wish I knew more. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for us... Uh, how, yeah, yeah. how do you met? And uh, you are come mm -hmm. from US. I come from Peru. Yes. That's a you know it, very you know uh, romantic story, right? <laughs> right. So I, I actually happened? don't remember. I don't remember the details. But we met. Uh, we were messing, messaging each other uh, before we met, okay. and the the goal was just to explore Lima. It was my first time visiting, uh, and I and to we show were talking. Right, and the culture, and we we hit it off, so to speak. And a lot of it was like long distance too, so it wouldn't be the traditional dating scene, I guess. But it, uh, yeah, I don't have anything more to add. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. I can well, say... And, and I would like to add that we had a very deep connection because um, in South America and also in Peru, 
Um, we, we have also grew with, I don't know, cartoons, music, movies, and like the American culture that is everywhere. So we had lots of things in common. <laughs> yeah, it's true. There's so many moments where it's like, wow, we had the same experience as a kid, as which a is kid. really interesting considering the geographical distance, yes. cultural differences. Yes, but, and given the fact yeah. that Peru is considered a third world country, but then it's true there's a, a, a minority that are descendants from European families that have a, a sort of like also um, a d different culture. So you can find a very, uh, lots of uh, culture variety in Peru. Yeah. Wow, that's an incredible story. You guys are lucky and find the right one. I can mm -hmm. feel, you know, you are a happy couple. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, maybe the last question. So uh, what do we know about China? Do we know anything about China? Um, well, <laughs> I mean, when you first heard about you know China, what is the first impression? No first. Um, uh, China has a an ancient culture that is one of the the most ancient ones in human history, and I, I know that uh, when it comes to medicine and and um, medical practices that are considered alternative. Um, it's, it's just amazing. Like in ancient Chinese culture, I think they understood the human body in a holistic way. Um, and it has so much to give to modern medicine and, and, and the world. Um, I also had uh, Chinese students. I, I became friends with uh, one of them. And she told me a lot about her culture. Um, but I wish I, I knew more. I know there's like beautiful landscapes and this, um, uh, this amazing, very old culture that I would like to learn from. It's, it's very necessary, I think. Yes. Yeah, definitely something we would focus on uh, during a visit to China. Uh, so for me, being American, uh, I'm very egocentric about the United States. I think we're a great country, a powerful country. Uh, China, I feel, is the only other country in the world that that <laughs> rivals the United States in in terms of uh, ability, skill, power, stuff like that. So I have a lot of respect for China as a country, and I use rival in a good way, not not in a in a conflict way, but that it's it's uh, one of the one of the world's superpowers right now, and it's um, having a big impact on the world and. And I, a lot of it's positive, I think. And uh, I, I hope that the relations can continue to be positive between our countries. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Uh... I, and I, I would like to add that, okay, so you, you were pretty much evolved in ancient culture, but also what, what? Uh, evolved. Okay. And then in, in nowadays, um, you have a, an amazing high tech, high -tech. industry. industry. It's like a, your, your genesis when it comes to technology. So, any brand you know uh, about Chinese, you know, tech company, or uh, you know, application, mm -hmm. or you know, uh, Huawei. Some website? Mm -hmm. I know oh, Huawei. Huawei. Okay. Yes, it's it's Xiaomi? like w w one of the main providers uh -huh. yeah. in La South America. Uh -huh. Yeah, right? Xiaomi too is the yeah. other. Those these are the two big ones. Yeah. Two big ones. yeah. And all the clothes, all the clothes are made in China. Clothes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, China, China is a world factory. Yeah, it's a world factory. I, I hope that the uh, factory workers get better, um, better rights. And yes, that, that's also very important. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you so much for, for the interview. So uh, uh, before, we, before we end, before we finish, uh, is there any other thing you want to talk? Anything? Anything you want to Free say? talk. Oh, please subscribe to this channel because <laughs> the videos are amazing. Okay. <laughs> yeah, for real though, great. Uh, great content. Uh, great content about Cusco. Mm -hmm. So yes. we, we watch the video; it's really cool. And uh, I recommend visiting. It's affordable. It lots to do. Uh, yeah, you'll have a good time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So, mm -hmm. hope one day when you are traveling in China, we can meet again. And, uh, Absolutely. Yes, yeah. yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.